Well, you, you kind of brought up the influence too, though, like the worldly man and like say today, like what is, what is being promoted? Like we got guys that are representing all of manhood, like this, um, Andrew Tate or these other people. And it's like, they got all these women and they're like fornicating. And it's like, yeah, they're standing up for a voice to like, okay, like being men and, and, uh, not whatever being like a lot of men are yeah. just made fun of in sitcoms and just laughed at. And it's like, no, men need to be respected. But I, me and you both know that God has designed the best order for a man. Right. And so, yeah, some of these guys are finding some of the truth, but they're not getting all of it, which is, and this goes back to the podcast, which is not only do you got to be strong in your faith, you have to maintain your family, right? Your, your, your finances, your health of your body, like all these areas. Just imagine if you slow faded all of them, right? In like two years, you're fat, you're yeah. c- committing adultery, you have estranged yeah. kids, you're bankrupt, yeah. like, and no one would ever say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that someday. But yet we're willing to make small decisions that totally line up with yeah. getting to that part, that point in life. Yeah. Um, and it's all like, hey, yeah, I get the two pieces of pie. Oh, yeah, now I get the, the latte. Now I get the, oh, yeah, the big fat cheeseburger. Oh, I'll do it again today. And, and it's all these small decisions that um, we have to like have some kind of audit or check right in in life so that your faith should be the core of what you do and if like where you were at i was also at at one point in life or i thought i was a say i was a christian but i had no yeah. real rooting um that really pushed me to be like no what god says and i will follow i'm gonna read it so i'm gonna take some effort yeah. to read it and then i'm gonna take a little bit of effort and try to do that and then when i'm uh and i'm gonna try to meet with people that are doing the yeah. same thing because i also have friends that they're not trying mm-hmm. to do anything they're just to make themselves better. And we don't talk about that. We just go have fun together. So what you were kind of doing is kind of where I was at in college. I was just, just living the flesh, like anything my heart desired, that's what I wanted to do. And that's where God found me. Um, but yeah, that, that slow fade and to, you know, I, I, I look at it as an importance of like faith and family are like the top, top two, the, like you don't want to lose those things. And yes, if you, you can always recover, but there's a cost to that. Um, yeah, just depending on how life goes for you. Thankfully, you know, you said your wife, Lisa stayed with you. Um, you sound yeah. like you're way more committed to your faith now, but, um, absolutely. You know, it's, it's kind of, well, two things like one, I think when you were mentioning, you know, how the world sees man today, right. Or how they portray man. And it's, it's the two extremes, right. It's, you know, the, the guy that looks like a girl, he's a guy, right. We're going to give into that topic, like define manhood. Right. But he gets into, sure. he, he's a man or he's a boy. And he looks like a woman, looks, you know, dressing similar to that. Or, you know, it, it's the whole, you know, against toxic masculinity, which I agree with. There shouldn't, but masculinity in and of itself isn't toxic, right? So it's like this full extreme to one side. And then you have the other side of what you just said, where you see guys on Instagram, the different influencers, different fighters, different things like that, where they're like money, women, all these things, like no true commitment other than trying to get that money or being famous. Although, you know, you have these two extremes and then on sitcoms and that, that gets on my nerves so much where it's the dumb dad, the careless dad, the dad that doesn't know anything, isn't really involved in his family, can't really do anything, just kind of there, right? Uh, Those three examples is what men see daily, all the time, all the time, where I feel now I look at, I mean, let's go back to Jesus, right? So those 12 dudes, right, his disciples that he grabbed in that era, if, if you think of Jesus as a tiptoeing through tulips hippie, you have it all wrong. Because in that era, like he goes to fishermen, rough men. These men live a rough life, work with their hands, like rough men. And he says, follow me. And they follow him, right? Like that is the man's man right? All man, all God, hundred percent of the time, but that is a man's man. And his biggest thing he pushes, the overarching thing is love in the gospels, right? The overarching thing is love and service. Jesus comes down from heaven, right? God sends Jesus to, to earth to live amongst us. And what does he do? He serves and he teaches and he loves. And does he get angry? Yes, of course he gets angry. Like he flips tables in a temple at one point. Like, yes, he does get angry. But he shows us the true value of what it truly is to be a man Um, where you don't have to be a lumberjack. You don't have to work with your hands. You don't have to do any of those things. But if you're just who God made you, right? As a man, we are uh, supposed to be leading our family. As a man, we are a protector, right? It doesn't have to look like a Hollywood protector. You don't have to be looking like Arnold or Bruce Willis and defending your home from like raids of terrorists. No, but protecting your family and protecting your wife is making them feel safe. If they don't feel safe around you, you're doing something wrong. 
if you're not leading your household spiritually or physically, like there's a misstep there and you need to figure that out because that's what God has truly called us to be. And when I talk about leading, it's a service leader, right? And that's what Jesus was. It was a, a service leader. It's not, listen, I've been under some amazing team leaders, amazing. And I've been under some that I'm like, dude, I would not go anywhere with you because he was like a more of a dictator type of leader. The amazing TLs that I worked for, man, those dudes I would do anything for because they were service. They were brothers. They loved, like it was that true, true service. Like they weren't going to ask you to do something unless they were going to do it kind of deal. Right. And that's the same way we should be leading our family. It's a service, you know, leader. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're bombarded with twisted views of manhood and what it means to be a man today all day, every day. That's what you see when man, open that Bible up and look at Jesus. Like, and if you're like, if you're questioning all this stuff, like, man, what's this guy talking about? Like open the Bible up, do this, do that. Jesus looks like some European hippie depicted on all over these, these paintings and all that. Like you need to go into the real history outside the Bible, right? Like the history that we have of that time of the world. Like these guys were, were roughnecks, right? They were, and then they were like, I'm going to follow that man. Like, you don't think that he was the man's man. If they're going to drop what they're doing and follow him. The other thing they thought, was that he was physically going to overtake a kingdom. Like that's what yeah. was thought back then. And so they looked at him as a military type of leader too. So you're thinking that dude, I'm going to follow him because he's a man. Like this dude looks like he can do some stuff, right? It's not what's depicted exactly. all the time. And it's just so frustrating, man, because, because of what you, you know, like I felt when, when I went through all my stuff, I mean, I'm part of a, I'm part of a specialized unit within the entity I work for. And, um, you know, only 12 of us made it through the course that I went through out of 75 and that's about par. And so you're around these alphas, these guys that are like tip top mentally, tip top physically, all these things. And so it feeds your pride big time um, because we would show up somewhere and it was just kind of like, this is what we do. This is how we work. You know, it just feeds your pride, feeds your pride. And you just have to take a step back. And that's what I was doing. I was feeding my pride and not being, my identity was in that and not in Christ. And so that's where I started to fall short, where I'm like, man, I'm untouchable. Like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I could do whatever because I had that twisted view of men, right? Where this is what, this is the ultimate man, right? And it's like, no, that's not the ultimate man. The ultimate man can do that stuff for sure. The ultimate man can also just have an accounting job somewhere. The ultimate man could just, you know, be home. Maybe he doesn't even have a job. Maybe his wife has a career like that could still be the ultimate man. It's not, I have all the ladies, I have all the money. I have the cool job. It's not any of that. It's just, man, mere, mere Jesus and that service led way of doing things. And that's it, man. That, that's the answer, right? No, I, I love that. I, I see Jesus different than some like churches may make him seem out, seem to be some like religions, like Catholicism. There's so many different views of them, and it's probably, yeah you're probably best served that you look yourself. Like uh, a lot of people um, believe in things they've heard about the Bible. They've never read it or yeah. they read it just a little bit, but no, I think people will be best served. Dig into it yourself. Like in um, reading what Jesus did, I, I do like a Bible reading plan that I think is, oh. I really like this right now, which is just reading Deuteronomy. That's like the book mm -hmm. of Kings. We're supposed to read that and know yeah. it, memorize it uh, a chapter a day, a proverb a day, and then read a gospel chapter a day. And that will just, to me, that I think that would help develop actual right, right men. And, you know, we talked earlier about like Jesus's anger that come, maybe comes up sometimes mm -hmm. that, um, but his anger is for the right things, right? He's not just yes. angry. Oh, cause you made me mad. Cause you're mean to me, you know, or you disrespect me. It was never that it was like, no, you're just, you're, you're like leading people astray. Like those of you, that's yeah. what he's mad about. Like, so there's like this rightness to anger that I've rarely have ever heard anyone teach on, um, which is standing up for the right things even the things that he cares about, which, um, you know, to me, the, he just can't beat the Bible. Like it's been around for like 3,500 years. They started writing this thing and no, no one to this day has discredited it. Like, so yeah. take that for what it's worth and, and dig into it. If you like that clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. If you want to watch the entire interview, click right here.